Good morning, Memphis. Welcome to our listeners across the 50 states here on Real Estate Mortgage Shop, and I'm your host, Joe Garner, Mortgage Loan Officer. You can connect with me at jogarner.com. Today we are asking you, how have you been able to take advantage of the current lending regulations and rules regarding appraisals on buying or refinancing your home? Our general topic today is getting approved for a mortgage, a new way and a new day. If you have a question or a comment and you're on Twitter, make them to hashtag J.O. Garner or call me directly off the show at 901-482-0354. You know what? You can call us while we're live today, Tom, at 901-535-9732 or outside the Memphis area, 1-800-474-9732. And today is January the 14th, 2017. Absolutely. And today we're going to cover some strategies under the new lending guidelines to give you some bragging rights on financing to uh, purchase your home or maybe even refinance one that you already own. We'll be taking a look at... uh, what lenders are doing to make financing a condominium easier. Tom King is going to be sharing some of the recent changes in the appraisal requirements and trends and giving you some ideas on how to work best with your appraiser. Tom King, uh, expert appraiser of Bill King and Company, is back in the studio. He has he's all studied up, you guys, on the newest appraisal regulations and what he sees in our local West Tennessee real estate market. Tom's been appraising houses for what over 40 years that's right (laughs) goodness and and he knows more than a thing or two about appraisals let me tell you Uh, but tell our listeners tom a little bit about yourself and what you do well i'm a residential appraiser second generation in the memphis area i do appraisals in shelby tipton and fayette county and uh i i uh do appraisals for mortgage loans i do them from individuals a lot of times for people Maybe a, a mother or father has passed away and there's three kids and one, maybe one of them wants to buy the house. And, you know, want, I do appraisals for that, estate, probate, just about everything, mortgage loan, uh, relocation, too. So uh, if it has to do with a single family house, I can do it. Absolutely. Well, Tom, you know, you've done a lot of that and you also work with investors who want to buy a rental property and maybe they're paying cash. And you just um, you go you've gone out there and done an appraisal for them, so at least they have an idea that they're paying within the market for that property. That's right. The same people that uh, will spend two hundred dollars to fix up a car should spend a little bit if they're going to buy a hundred oh. hundred fifty thousand dollar house. So <laughs> it just makes a good sense. It does. Well, if if you've um. If you've been at your career for many years like uh, like Tom has, or you, you could probably remember who made money when the new regulations or the new market uh, trends began and how they positioned themselves to make that money. A lot of our listeners have played football or some other sport, or like me, you just enjoy watching other people play. But it's quite exhilarating when in the crucial last seconds of the game your team executes a play or a new play or maybe even they pull out an old one dust it off and surprise everyone by scoring to to win the game well if you take a moment you could probably think of a play like that that you've seen or been involved with that's right joe and you know it reminds me of the uh uh college championship game where uh clemson scored at the last minute to win the game and the championship or uh, the comeback from the Grizzlies when they were down 26 against the Clippers, all that good stuff. That, <laughs> it's exhilarating. Uh, it is. It's good. You just about get ready to turn the TV off and say, hey, they're coming back. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes I think of the mortgage business or buying real estate like a game where you have to watch what the other players are doing and the conditions on the field. You know, I want to win, and uh, I want my mortgage clients to win, too. But the conditions on the mortgage field is uh, is that we've seen we've seen mortgage rates rising following this election back in 2016, but they're still low enough for home buyers to have some bragging rights on their terms and for real estate investors to make a nice profit if they're buying rental property. The conventional 30-year fixed rates are hanging around 4.125 percent to four and a quarter or so. That's no points, but it can vary according to factors in the loan. The 15-year fixed rates are in the low to mid threes. And You know, whether we see inflation or not this year, you can set yourself up to win, whether the market is up or down. Our Federal Reserve Chairman, Janet Yellen, says she believes we could see inflation in 2017, and she's prepared to raise that Fed rate multiple times, she says, if necessary. 
So what if inflation starts to kick in? Well, you know, if the value of your real estate property goes up and the rents go up with it, you're going to have built some equity in your home while you sleep. And you can raise the rents more often. It's called giving yourself a raise. And, and, you know, having a low fixed rate mortgage and not a variable rate during this time would help um, if the rates start to move up. Any new changes in our economic environment, whether we see inflation or not, though, may give you a reason to execute a new game plan. Or just like in football or basketball, dust off the old forgotten one and you know, really score on your real estate investment. That's that's right, Joe. And, you know, you can uh, look at how inflation is going to change things. Uh, your value of your home may go up. Uh, uh, also, your Social Security or uh, investments may go up a little bit. So uh, it, it's got its advantages a little bit, but uh, don't want to see too much of it. <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, people have to live somewhere. And, and, you know, even if it's a depressed real estate market like we've seen a few years ago, if you bought the house right with a fixed rate that you can afford, you're probably going to come out better than with some of your other investments. Absolutely. Real estate has proven to provide you with a good hedge against inflation and you can put down a small down payment and get a low mortgage uh, fixed rate for 30 years. Tom, no other country in the world offers this wealth building strategy, that 30-year fixed rate. Some of the government loan programs like our FHA or the Veteran Administration Mortgage or the 100% Rural Housing Program, Not only do they offer you a chance to put just a little bit down to get a whole lot of house, but and they but they offer you a really low fifteen or thirty year fixed rate interest rate. But not only that, but icing on the cake, these government loans can be assumed by someone who want who wants to buy your house and they're willing to pay you a really nice chunk of change for your equity in exchange for the right to qualify with your mortgage servicer and take over making your payments at your low interest rate. But they've got to qualify, of course, with the mortgage company to be able to assume your loan. So what if rates decide to ratchet up back, you know, back up again? You have this built-in assumption strategy to execute and make a profit, even if the rates go back up. What a winning play. I mean, depending on whichever way the market moves. That's right, you know, Joe. And, and, you know, if you've got a, a 90% loan, and the interest and the values of houses go up uh, 5%, 6%, and you've got a 4% loan, you're making a whole lot of money on that 10% that you've got, and your values are going up. So it's a, it's a great time to be uh, buying a house right now. You know, leverage is a powerful financial tool. Well, Tom, there are plenty of opportunities right now in this mortgage lending environment for homeowners who want to convert their variable rate, like equity lines of credit or other adjustable rate programs, over to a really low fixed rate program while they have an opportunity. We're seeing real estate investors even pull cash out of some of their properties and use it to that tool again, leverage tool, to leverage into buying additional properties to give them even more Uh, positive cash flow. So, uh, you know, let's talk. You can connect with me at jogarner.com. You can email me at jo at jogarner.com. Or you can call me personally at 901-482-0354. But you have to talk with me personally to work with me personally. And I want to work with you. Or call us while we are live in the studio today, January 14th, 2017, at 901-535-9732 or 1-800-474-9732. You know, we got about a minute, Tom, and I know we're going to come back to this topic, but what's new and changing when it comes to appraisals and how do home buyers and sellers position themselves uh, for the best results? Well, for the home buyer, I'd say that the number one thing is there's not much on the market. Every time, every area that I'm looking at, the number of listings has gone down significantly. I'm talking the Memphis area, but it's probably like that all over the country. So uh, if you see something, um, you may want to look at either offering a full price or getting a, getting an appraisal done real fast to see what the value is and things like that. So uh, uh, get that stuff done. Don't Don't wait. All right. Well, you're listening to Real Estate Mortgage Shop. I am Joe Garner, your host, mortgage loan officer. We're talking with Tom King, appraiser with Bill King Company. 
we would love to talk with you. So give us a call on the air while we're live at 901-535-9732. We'll see you guys back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Pat Goldstein. I listen to the Real Estate Mortgage Shop in Memphis and North Mississippi. And it's a new day. You're on Real Estate Mortgage Shop. I am Joe Garner, your host, mortgage loan officer. You can connect with me at jogarner.com. And sitting in the studio again is Tom King, who is a an appraiser. He's with Bill King Company. And uh, we'd like for you to drag up a chair and join us today. And you can do that today, January 14th, 2017, by calling us in the studio at 901-535-9732. And so we're going to keep going. We're talking about our topic. And today we're talking about a lot of lending guidelines that have changed, uh, giving you an opportunity. Whereas maybe a couple of months ago, you may have said, nah, can't make this deal work for myself here. But with some of the changes that have happened, you may want to relook at that. And Tom, I um, want to talk to you. You were going to talk about some strategies that people can use when they are getting their appraiser appraisal done with their appraiser. And I want to ask you this question. What type of comparable sales in the neighborhood do you use when, and which ones do you not use when you're calculating a value on somebody's house? All right. That's a, that's a great question. And uh, I talk to a lot of real estate agents and they seem to think that if you go outside the subdivision that you're doing something wrong or something like that. But, um, you know, if someone wants to buy a house in Bartlett, they pretty much going to shop most of that area mm-hmm. uh, in the old Bartlett, old city limits area. And uh, so we can expand our search pretty far uh, over a mile if we have to. Uh, all we have to do is make a comment on there. But we look for the same type house with the same amenities. Now, with the MLS system, we can go in on on sales and look inside the house, the pictures and things like that, to try to get the very best sale that we have. The best sale used, you know, used the old school used to be. Uh, let's let's look for the house across the street that sold two days ago. Now that may be the worst sale because that may be uh, a non arms link transaction. It may not be fixed up the the way your house is. Uh, it may be better than your house. So um, that the exact location doesn't come into it as much as the uh, the amenities of your house, the condition of your house as compared to others. Now, you, if you're in Bartlett, you don't want to go to Germantown or anything right. like that, but, <laughs> but you have to stay in the general areas to what we think uh, the typical buyer would look at. Well, and that that's a good answer to that. I have clients that call me, uh, especially when they're wanting to refinance a home, and they're like, well, Joe, that house right across the street, it's sold for this or that. Well, like you said, that house across the street may not have the same amenities as yours, and it may not be a, as good a comparable in the eyes of an appraiser as something that may be down the street. So it really does come back to the appraiser and, and those comparables that are most like your house most comparable. Yes, I was house. doing. I was doing a million dollar house in uh, Germantown this week, and um, I said, you know, if someone's going to buy a million dollar house, they're going to search all of Germantown, <laughs> you know, pretty much. And uh, sure enough, there were homes um, two, uh, two or three miles away, and they sold for a million dollars. Now it's all Germantown, so uh, I, I tend to think that that would be okay. I think if you're going to look in that price range, you're you're going to look at pretty much everything in there so exactly. uh, and pick out what's best for you. Well, talk about, let's let's move over to some government financing, FHA. What are some recent changes on appraisal guidelines that you've seen specifically for that FHA program, and how does that affect a person who is going to uh, sell their home or get an appraiser? Well, they changed the rules, what, about 15 months ago to for the FHA appraisals, and everyone was in a, a, a tizzy about it, to put it in <laughs> one word, but uh, it, it's really not as... As catastrophic as everyone thinks it is, but we do have to look at uh, be semi home inspectors. Uh, the hot water has to be on. The utilities have to be on. The uh, we have to check uh, ranges, ovens, uh, flip the disposal, and see what's going on, and make that report. And uh, 
For FHA, believe it or not, the appraiser makes no requirements. They make recommendations to the mortgage company of what repairs can be done, but the mortgage company has the final say-so. And the mortgage company is looking to FHA because everybody's covering themselves <laughs> the, on this. The, the mortgage company doesn't ever overrule us. I'll put it that way. <laughs> but but it, on a technical basis, that is what is got to be done. Yes, and also you mentioned that when you go up into the attic, you have to be able to see most of that attic. Is that still the case, or has yes, that changed? Yes, that's right. That's yeah. right. I, I was in an attic in uh, a house the other day, and uh, actually it was a vacant house. The, the owner met me there, and I said, ma'am, we've just had some really cold weather. Did you know that your water's still on? And she said, no, I didn't. I said, did you know you had no insulation in your in your house at all in the attic? And she said, no. And uh, she'd been living there for years. And never, I said, I was wondering why it was getting so warm in the summer and so cold in the winter, but there's not one bit of insulation in that attic. So wow. that's why we have to go in there to make those reports, and it has to have it has to have some insulation for FHA. Right, right. Well, just in general, what are some guideline changes that homeowners need to know about, Tom, before getting an appraisal? Well, before you get an appraisal, I tell people to look around your house, and that sounds so silly, but you know, we go in from we pull into the garage, go right in the house. Look all around it. Look on the roof. Look on the uh, uh, upstairs. Uh, look for rotted wood. Uh, maybe some shingles that are out. We take pictures of all that stuff. We have to report what we see. So uh, those are the kind of things that you you see. And there are a lot of things I can see in ten minutes in a house that a homeowner that lived there fifteen years may not ever have seen. So I'm not saying I'm that good, but you just get into the habit of saying it's your house, and you don't you don't really look at it or analyze the things that we might look at. Here, here's a tip, though. <laughs> this has happened more than once where the client has called me and said, hey, Joe, we want to refinance our house and we want to pull some cash out because we're going to do some renovation. We're going to upgrade some things in our home. So that's all great. And, uh, you know, I tell them I have a little checklist that go th- to go through that tells them, hey, if there's rotted wood, if there's a leaky roof, if there's uh, if electrical or plumbing or anything uh, like electrical plumbing, HVAC, you know, heating and air and that kind of thing. If any of that doesn't work, you're going to have to have it operational or the appraiser is going to have to come back out for a fee, of course, the second time and make sure it works. Well, more than once, I have had the client say, okay, they've locked in their loan, we've ordered the appraisal, and before the appraiser gets out to the house, they've already torn off the brick on the front of the house, and they've already maybe taken up, taken out one of the toilets because, hey, they're going to renovate that room, but they should have waited till after the appraiser did the inspection, not before, because now the appraiser's coming in and saying, well, there's, not a, there's a missing toilet in one of the bathrooms, and this house has no brick on the front. It's just exposed. So, you know, be careful about the timing on these kinds of things. That's right. And I, I did a house Thursday in uh, Cooper Young where a man was renovating it, and he didn't have all the siding on the outside. I said, you don't have to do that. And actually, his driveway was mud, uh, absolute no no gravel, no concrete or anything. I said, that's not typical for this area. You're going to have to do that. So I had to sit down with him and say, here's the things we have to do, and here's some things you want to do into in it. But here, you know, we got we we talked for a long time, just saying, how in the world are we going to make this work? And that's one thing I try to do is work with my clients to see what I tell them what I have to do, and explain to them and uh, go from there. We've got a couple of minutes. Uh, what type of repairs or upgrades should a homeowner consider doing to their home to realize the best return on their money that they're going to invest in things like that? Tom? Well, I was in a house this week where a guy said, "Should I paint the cabinets? Well, that is that going to make a big difference in the value?" I said, "Well, no, it's not." Uh, actually, he had Corian, and it was a house in Cordova. And uh, I said, well, you know, if you really want to fix it up, you know, spend some money and put some granite in there. Uh-huh. Or fix up the, the kitchen first, the bath second, and uh, everyone's putting in new tile in their bath, uh, granite, and that makes all the difference in the world. If you've got a vinyl floor, you may want to consider putting some tile in that kitchen. Mm-hmm. Things like that. That's what the market is really requiring in, in just about any price range over 175 mm-hmm. and up. It really depends on what the other houses in the neighborhood have. I think you've said before 
So something to consider before you before you start deciding what you want to spend money doing to improve or upgrade your home. You're listening to Real Estate Mortgage Shop. I am Joe Garner, your host, mortgage loan officer. You can connect with me at jogarner.com because I'd like to connect with you. You can also email me, jo at jogarner.com, or you can call me off the air and we can talk more directly at 901-482-0354. We're talking with Tom King of Bill King Company, our appraiser expert today. Tom, how can we reach you? 901-487-698. Nine. Or call us while we're live today, January 14th, 2017 at 901-535-9732. We'll see you guys back in just a moment. The home of Memphis Tiger basketball. This is News Talk 600 WREC, WEGRHD2, Memphis, and iHeart Radio Station. Hi, I'm Donna Smith Bellinger from GroupEndeavors.com in Chicago, Illinois, and you are listening to Real Estate Mortgage Shop. And now, back to your host, Joe Garner. What's new, Pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's new, Pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. So we're talking about Pussycat. what's new. That's right. <laughs> You're on Real Estate Mortgage Shop. I am Joe Garner, your host mortgage loan officer and you can connect with me at jogarner.com you can also find me hanging around evolve bank and trust we're also talking with tom king a bill king appraisal company and we want to talk with you so you can call us today in the studio while we're live january 14th 14th 2017 and tom what's that number 901-535-9732 and if you're outside the memphis area 1-800-474-9732 Tom, before we jump into that trivia contest, let's can you cover a little bit more about, we were talking about what comparable sales to use and what kind of repairs to do on your property that will bring you the most value. Can you pick up where we left off on well, that? Well, we picked up on uh, earlier about uh, what to do with uh, your kitchen and baths, but I've, I've gotten two instances where people have kind of overspent, and one man called me up and he said, uh, I'm in about a 400 Four hundred fifty thousand dollar house, and I've spent one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on my sound system, <laughs> on my media media room, or whatever. And I said, I don't know if that's going to bring back that much money or not. And uh, I, I gave him an instance of another man that had a half acre lot, and believe it or not, he spent six hundred thousand dollars on landscaping. <laughs> and I said, you know, landscaping is great, but there comes a time when you can really overdo it. And the house looked great, but I, I don't know if uh, spending half a million dollars or so on landscaping on a half-acre lot is uh, going to do that much. I, I, I think you can spend your money better in other places like the kitchen and baths. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're going to play a little game today. And you, I know you guys out there that listen to us every week know how to play the Look Back Memphis Trivia Contest. Our Look Back Memphis Trivia Contest is brought to you by notable Memphis historian Jimmy Ogle. And Jimmy offers free historic walking tours downtown in the spring and fall and for information about jimmy go to jimmy ogle that's jimmy o-g-l-e dot com the look back memphis trivia contest is sponsored by john and jennifer lawhon of lawhon landscape 901-754-7474 and the lawhons can help you plan your landscaping if you have a big big project like i guess that guy That's right. <laughs> did or even if you have a small project or you can do that really big project in phases i, I think they can be a little bit more frugal with your money <laughs> than the Probably so. Well, the Lawhons are giving away a $25 gift card to the first person with the correct trivia answer. And if you know the answer to our trivia question, call us at 901-535-9732 or 1-800-474-9732. Tom, what is our trivia question? Our trivia question is, I'm going to give you a few hints also, I was renamed after a century and renamed again, Who Am I? And this home was built in 1907 as a residence. In 1923, it became the home of social and of a social and philo- philanthropic, I can't say that, organization. And it withstood a century of progress and destruction to the neighborhood. And now it is the newest dining experience in Memphis. 
Who so, am I? Yes. What's the name of the dining experience or the name of the building? Or the name of the building. You can, you get, you'll get the answer right if you name the name of the restaurant or if you name uh, the former, what we call that building in Memphis. It's a historic building. If you know the answer, call us, 901-535-9732. I think we've already got people calling in. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, Joe, I got a question for you. What are some of the newest loan mortgage changes that are uh, making it easier or better? Or what's the news on, <laughs> on all that good stuff for our home buyers? Well, you know, a low down payment government FHA mortgage program just announced that they are lowering their monthly mortgage insurance premium effective for loan closings on or after January 27th, 2017. And, uh, you know, that's not on every one of their products, but most of the products that are that most people use. Some buyers who did not qualify to buy the house they wanted on the FHA program maybe a month ago or so, we need to take a relook at that and calculate what your payment would be with this reduction in the monthly mortgage premium. There are no income restrictions on the FHA program, and you don't have to be a first-time home buyer to get this 3.5% down payment loan. Uh, one little heads up, though, Tom, that they're talking about now is that they're not sure they're going to keep this lower monthly mortgage insurance premium in place because it may be at risking their insurance uh, fund, their premium, uh, their buildup and what they have to have to cover their risk. So here's the here's the hint to the wise. Do Get it. it. Do yeah. it now. <laughs> Get it while the, the getting good. the deal works today, the do it definite, today. definitely do it today. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, the conventional Fannie Mae Home Ready loan program has just been renovated and upgraded, Tom, and it's uh, really made um, it made some changes to the program that's made it easier for borrowers to qualify. Now, this one is a 3% down payment, much lower mortgage insurance premiums, and they have a lower interest rate now than what was once offered on the former, what they call the community loan product. So it's a whole lot better uh, product for borrowers, making it a lot easier for them to qualify. It may work perfectly for you on keeping your move-in costs low and your payments too. If it doesn't, we can find a program that does keep your terms really comfortable for you. Call me and we can try it on for size. You can reach me directly off the air, 901-482-0354, or you can connect with me at jogarner.com. Now, if you really need to buy a house with nothing down, call me and we can look at a combination of products. If you're a military veteran, you may qualify for the 100% VA loan. If you're buying in an area that isn't the most densely populated, we even some places in Shelby County, we could try the 100% rural housing. It's called the USDA loan. Or we could look at various down payment assistance programs for you. There are some 100% loans for doctors like physicians and other professions, too. Well, that's right, Joe, and um, those are great tips. And it looks like you, if you want to buy a house, this might be the time to do it with interest rates going up and all that good stuff. What changes do you see on the horizon? Look into your magic binoculars and, <laughs> and see what see what might happen with uh, borrowers and home buyers and all that. Well, change is in the offing. The uh, FHA loan program has lowered the owner occupancy requirements for condominiums. Now, before it was almost impossible since 2011 to get uh, a condominium approved for an FHA loan because of all the really heavy duty requirements, and it was very expensive for uh, condominium projects to get that approval uh, process done on their condominium uh, units. But at the moment, the minimum percentage required for home owner occupants, like the percentage of total ownership of those units, used to you had to have at least 50% owner occupants in there. Now, they've done two things. They've said, okay, we'll consider an owner-occupant, even somebody who uses it as a second home, which a lot of people will use a condo for a crash pad if they're working in Memphis but live somewhere else, or they may use it for, like... Or they go downtown. A lot of people have condos downtown the where they can uh, watch a game uh, and go to the condo and then go home the next day. Back to Collierville or That's back right. to Fayette County. Exactly. Well, now they're saying that they're going to count those people as owner occupants and here's another big one instead of 50 percent minimum owner occupant uh owner occupancy they've moved it down to 35 percent and that's a very big deal 
right. And this is under the Housing Opportunity through Modernization, Modernization Act 2016. Here's an FYI on this. First of all, the condominium project acceptable financer to use this uh, this reduction in uh, requirements. The other thing here's another FYI. They're talking about taking it back and moving it back to where it was because they're concerned about the risk on the the insurance program. So here's another, another reason to do it today. <laughs> <laughs> the deal works for you today. Do it today. I've got some great links on the blog post for today's show. You can get later on Monday at uh, jogarner.com. Here's another one. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac have increased the maximum loan amount that they will allow under their low interest rate programs. To get a low interest rate, fixed rate for 30 years, really low, used to the maximum loan amount, if you qualify for it, was 417000 They just moved that up to 424100 for single-family homes. If you're buying a duplex, triplex, quadruplex, it's higher than that. But here's the, here's the thing. If, if the deal didn't work for you a month ago or so because you were trying to get into that jumbo market and the rate may have been too high for you, Come back to me. Let's try again because uh, you may find that the rates and terms are a whole lot better now. Those are some pretty big changes. Mm -hmm, They are. Well, you know, back in October 2015, uh, Tom, there were some mandatory delay periods set into the mortgage process. It's catching some people who have done mortgages before by surprise. They're like, well, I don't remember this being the case when I last closed on my loan six, seven years ago or whatever. Well, that's true. And it's called the Know Before You Owe regulations, and lenders call it TRID or T-R-I-D. But you can get some tips on getting your loan approved and closed in the shortest amount of time by going to a link that I have on today's blog post, uh, jogarner.com, and just go to the show that's called Getting Approved for a Mortgage, a New Way, and a New Day. It was today's show. There are so many little known products that can be used by themselves or even in combination with each other to help you get the down payment and the payment amounts that you want. And if you're a real estate investor or you're just buying a primary residence or a second home, call me and let's put together some real estate financing terms that you can brag about. Make your plan. Let's work your plan. If the deal works for you today, let's do it today. But uh, you're on Real Estate Mortgage Shop. I am Joe Garner, your host, mortgage loan officer. We're talking with Tom King of Bill King Company, our expert appraiser. We want to talk with you. So give us a call at 901-535-9732. And we're going to take a break and we'll come back and we'll see you guys in just a moment. Hi, I'm Gwen Christensen with Builders Floors Interiors. We're located near the Wolf Chase Mall in Memphis, Tennessee. You're listening to Real Estate Mortgage Shop. Now back to Joe Garner, your host. It's a brand new day, Tom. You're on Real Estate Mortgage Shop. I am Joe Garner, your host, mortgage loan officer. You can connect with me at jogarner.com. You can also find me hanging around Evolve Bank and Trust here in Memphis, the Memphis area. But I work in every state of the union. So if you have a friend or a family member who was wanting to buy a house or refinance a primary residence, a second home, or even build their real estate investment portfolio, I would have, I'd love to have a chance to get to work with them in any state where they are. That's right. When you call your number, you get you. You do. I've That's got right. that whole deal set up that way, Tom. You know, I, I love talking with people, and I have my team set up, and we have it done so that I can spend my time talking to you, my client, and finding out what you want to accomplish and helping you put our plan together to make that happen. So That's you, right. can, you can call me directly at 901-482-0354. You can email me jo at jogarner.com. But you know what, Tom? We've got a trivia winner. All right. We've got Marion on the line. and um, Marion, what's the answer to our trivia contest? That's right, Marion. It, it was the 19th Century Club, but I've forgotten what, uh, what the name of the new uh, eatery is. That's great, Marion, and and actually, it's called Azakia. 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 Something like that. It's a, a 
it's a restaurant now. And uh, the 19th Century Club was once facing demolition. The former 19th Century Club mansion has been turned into a new purpose. It was built in 1907 by lumberman Roland Darnell, and it was one of many fine homes that lined the street. Now it's the only one left. After being, after 85 years of being owned by the 19th Century Club, uh, it faced danger of demolition. The Memphis Heritage and some concerned citizens intervened, and now it's a restaurant, and it's a good thing for Memphis. It's nice always Japanese, a good thing. Nice Japanese food. Marion, have you ever eaten down there? No, but it sure sounds appetizing. Well, you'll, you'll get a $25 gift card to uh, kind of... From the Lahans, the Lahan landscape. John and Jen- Jennifer Lahan's going to send you a twenty-five dollar gift card, Marion. And- Wonderful, because I need some <laughs> upgrade in my front yard. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that sounds great. But we'll look. Uh, stay on the line, and uh, Miss Hardiman will get all your information, and we'll take care of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Marion. Uh, have Congra- a good day. Congratulations. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That, good for her. I mean, you know, it's good to know your, your city's history. That's right. It's a very good thing. Are we going to do the, is it time? Is it time to do the, I think it is. I think it is. That's the real estate tip of the week. And Tom, I think you have it. <laughs> That's right. I've, I've done uh, two new houses, two or three new houses in the past week and a half. And one of the things I've been telling my builders is that in order for us to, the appraiser, to use that sale in the uh, a comparable sale. It's got to be an MLS. MLS is Memphis. I say the multiple listing service. Multiple listing service. And uh, I told him, I said, listen, some of them require an MLS number and days on market in order for that sale to be valid. So if you've got a model and you're selling like four or five homes in that subdivision and they're not in MLS, I can't. Use, uh, many times I cannot use them as a sale. They say, but it's right there. I know it. I sold it. I said, if it's they want an MLS number, so. Put an MLS no, put it in MLS, please. And I did this for a house in uh, a new house in the Hickory Hill area. I told the the sales manager that had no idea. I talked to a builder that's been building homes for forty years, and he had no idea. And he's got three homes listed on the same street where he's living. So uh, and that's in a million dollar range so So even if it's not completely built they should go ahead and put it in the multiple listing service that's right or if it just got sold put it in mls as a uh, mls entry and that'll make that sale work so well you know a lot of our our listeners tom they're either just buying a regular house or they're maybe building a house like you're talking to but a lot of our listeners are real estate investors and uh, they're buying houses and building up their rental portfolio one tip that I have for if you're a real estate investor and you intend to have as many properties on a fixed rate, low interest rate as possible, currently Fannie Mae will allow you to get a Fannie Mae low interest rate, fixed rate loan for up to 30 years as long as you have 10 finance properties or less. But once you have over 10 financed residential properties, like one to four units in your name, then you're you're going to have to go to like commercial lending and you know and things like that and I I can help you do that. Here's a tip: if you are married and you guys are doing your your buying together, you might want to put ten of the properties financed in one spouse's name and uh, ten financed in the other spouse's name. That way, you get twenty chances at the low interest rate fix for 30 years rather than just 10. Hey, that sounds great. I've yeah. done that. And and you know, it's it's really interesting to watch over the years. I've been in the business over 25 years to watch the investors that have been my customers for many years and how they built their wealth. And they really do work smart with these strategies. And if you want to come in and just talk about what your plans are to build your real estate portfolio, I would love to sit down with you and talk about that and work out some financing strategies. And, and that's how you get rich very slow. And right. it takes a little time to do it. And people that get rich fast get poor fast. <laughs> you know? So don't overextend yourself and uh, save a little bit for that rainy day. 
Got some announcements. Talk Shop offers free networking and education to anyone interested in real estate or in business. Talk Shop meets every Wednesday, 9 to 10 a.m. at Nova Copy, 7251 Ampling Farms Parkway in Memphis, Tennessee. This Wednesday, January 18th, 2017, Talk Shop presents Keep Your Business and You Healthy for the New Year. David Grigsby, Mid-South Orthopedic Rehab, is going to be presenting that. Talk Shop events are free thanks to our supporters like Chef Eric Myers of Eat at Eric's Food Truck and Catering. You can reach him at eataterics.com. Connect with Eric for your event. Uh, For this podcast of Real Estate Mortgage Shop and more, go to jogarner.com. And, of course, we like to remind you at Real Estate Mortgage Shop to make your plan. Let's work your plan. If the deal works for you today, do Do it it today. today. That's right. Got a couple of quotes uh, from the quote corner, Tom. Here's one. Uh, from Benjamin Franklin, when you're finished changing, you're finished. <laughs> that's, lo- that's a lovely one. Here's that's what right. Robert Gallagher says, change is inevitable, except from a vending machine. <laughs> How many uh, times does that happen? More than right? one person is shaking a vending machine trying to get that uh, bag of potato chips or something like that out, or, or that nickel or dime that's been caught in the machine. Just a little frustration sometimes <laughs> make a big difference in your day. There you go. There you go. Well, how do we get in touch with you? 901-482-0354. You can go to jogarner.com. You can find all kinds of history from Jimmy Ogle's, uh, our Look Back Memphis Trivia Contest, on the blog post. And we have, if you click on that blog post, Tom, it'll take you to a page where you can read the information. If you don't want to, uh, if you just want to have all the notes taken for you, they're there. There's an embedded podcast. You can listen, you can read, however it works for you. If you have any topics that you want to hear or you want to find out about uh, on Real Estate Mortgage Shop, contact me, email me at jo at jogarner.com. We'll try to get these topics covered for you. Tom, is there mm-hmm. anything you want to well, add? You can give me a call at 901-487-6989. And if you want to see Jimmy Ogle at his day job, Go to the Peabody. He's the new Dutch <laughs> right. master. So <laughs> that's a great thing. So uh, it's really weird. I grew up with him, and it, it's it's crazy to see him as the <laughs> Dutch master. Yeah, come see us in Memphis. Some of our listeners across the country have come in, and we've actually had them in the studio. And uh, we love you guys as our listeners. We love hanging out with you on Saturday. So um, check us out at jogarner.com. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Attention men, if you have tried or wanted to try Viagra or Cialis, or if you've ordered an over-the-counter product in the last few years, Noxit-